uh, this is uh, Commodore uh, Silas Stringham, of course, um, was the head of the Navy uh, engagement that came down. And he, I think he just looks very, very steamy there. Um, this uh, is very, uh, a part of, as an archivist, part of my uh, interest is those corollary topics about our holdings, it's not just the facts of the, it, you know, the events, but the documents themselves, what they mean, how can they be perceived and interpreted and, and trusted even as their integrity. So um, this, this is the gallant exploit of aide-de-camp Viscopian bombardment of Fort Hatteras. Um, very stylized, um, much of the artwork is um, borders on propaganda, and, and this this almost um, and of course it was primarily for the northern audience. Okay, so one thing I want to mention is that you think of the American Civil War as the first photo documented American war, but here on Hatteras we have. Now hard, I, I hesitate to say no photos, but very very few photos, and um, there. Are, there's a lot of debate about why low body counts very early in the war. You didn't have Maggie Brady and other uh, photojournalists out in the field yet. Um, all the hurricanes we have and so forth, it, you know, a lot of like it's damaged. So we have to depend upon these images, but they many times, there are many times this artistic license taken. And you have field correspondence doing very hasty sketches, and then they're dispatched up to Philadelphia or Boston or New York or Washington, wherever, and then the lithographers um, take, there again, great license sometimes. So there are scenes of mountains <laughs> and the counters one. That didn't happen. So. Okay. This is a, uh, an image of the bombardment of Fort Hatteras. And, um, of course, it's been hand colored. As someone who was new to this topic, you know, not so many years ago, to actually see pictures, even if they can't be trusted 100%, I think really brings it home. Um, much, it, it supplements what we read, what we study. This is um, troops disembarking at Fort Hatteras on the first day. So the fleet's opening fire, boats landing through the surf. So you already have a lot of troops on, on the, uh, the shore, some major sized ships out there, and troops, of course, disembarking. Um, this is an image that, that's seen pretty, pretty frequently, again, hand-colored, um, rather stylized. Uh, bombardment and capture of the forts at Hatteras Inlet. Um, the, and this, this is just another one, the fight at, at Hatteras Inlet. This is supposedly the gunboat Monticello, commanded by Lieutenant Brain. Um, and this is the vessel of for which <coughs> the flag that the auction tomorrow night um, um, will go towards um, restoration of that flag. And I, I understand this is nothing like that vessel looked like. And Joe, I meant to ask you that. Are you, are you familiar with what the Monticello actually looked like? Uh, actually, that's a pretty good illustration. Is it? Look at all the paintings that we have of it. Uh -huh. They're showing it. Uh, they're all remarkable. <coughs> she has some like these heat suit structures uh, for that period. Thank you. That's good. Could you show those full screen? It's a little hard to see the details back. Oh, I am so sorry. I meant to do this as a slideshow. Um, thank you. Uh, let's do this, and we may have to flash through the first one. Thank you. Dutch. Okay. Let's flash down. Thank you so much. Okay, there we are. Pretty accurate description also of the, um, um, you know, the sandbar 
dollars and so forth. Um, I think one of the things that's also interesting about etchings from this period is just the artistic um, aspect. You've got very painterly scenery in this, um, the clouds and, and so forth. Oh, and I am sorry, I, I neglected to, to okay. This is um, at the uh, Surrender. It's the general view of Fort Henderson and Clark captured on the 2nd of August, 1861, by the Federal Navy and military forces under command of Commodore Stream and Major General Butler. Um, you see the, the yellow flag, of course, and uh, so forth. Okay. We have several shots then, or, or images, of um, the interior as fortifications were already built. It was inhabited, inhabited um, by the Confederates, although for not terribly long, uh, not years, but um, it had been built. There were commodities there. Um, some of the letters you'll hear um, uh, comments about, about that. So it was pretty hasty retreat out of the uh, Fort Clark and, and uh, the surrender in um, This is just another <coughs> image. Um, that shows pretty elaborate um, structures and the cannon. This is Camp Wool, two miles from Fort Clark, Hatters Island, as it was occupied by the Hawkins Wasps, the Ninth New York uh, volunteers. Um, vessel or uh, buildings that were already in existence and what well, looks like a lot of you know in the distance you see what looks like a lot of barracks already um, but I, I, I don't hear again I, I'm not quite sure how accurate that all is okay. and just here's another scene the view of the camp of the 50th Indiana Regiment and also also at Fort Hatteras, an anchorage at Hatteras, um, taken from the ramparts of Fort Clark. 